Um, in these times, the focus very much is on folk is, is on trying to protect the interests of smaller firms, HDP firms. But because of the COVID-19 epidemic, large firms, firms that are perceived to be dominant, who often are thought to have deep pockets, are also struggling significantly. One can just think of firms such as SAA, which was a dominant strong firm until recently and is now in, in, in dire straits. So the, the important aspect that we feel is necessary to focus on when we consult with our clients in this regard is that fairness is, is a concept that is difficult to define, but is very, very dependent upon all the facts and circumstances of the particular firms. And therefore, a lot of work is needed to be done to actually dig down and consider who are these who are these customers and suppliers of yours that uh, are, are required to be supported uh, under the new provisions of the Competition Act. How are you going to collect information regarding who they are? How are you going to verify that they fall within the relevant categories? And those are the things where where we believe the BE provisions as well as the income tax provisions might assist firms to the extent that they already have. Um, these types of programs um, underway. Just briefly before we get into some of the detail regarding the identity of the firms that we we be dealing with here that are worthy of protection, um, just to give you a brief overview of what these provisions seek to do to the extent that you haven't delved down into them. The first provision in the Competition Act dealing with higher power is, is contained in Section 8.4. And the um, provision essentially seeks to prohibit uh, dominant firms from pricing unfairly or imposing unfair terms and conditions on these categories of vulnerable firms, namely SMEs and HDPs. And there's also an anti-avoidance provision which says that um, it's a contravention to avoid dealing with um, these particular firms. Um, now, that, that poses significant difficulties if your business is not geared towards dealing with uh, firms in these categories, and that's where we think that um, it might definitely be useful to try to focus on certain of these supplier development or customer development initiatives that are currently uh, features of, 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 of many, uh, many corporate activity when you look at B initiatives, because these programs um, are already geared towards at least demonstrating um, a level of compliance with the Competition Act in the sense that they um, have um, as their targets firms that are smaller um, and, and also firms that are uh, comprised of historically disadvantaged uh, in individuals. I think we, we, we're going to move on now to the um, COVID-19 tax relief measures, obviously something that's very topical at the moment. Um, and they were predominantly obviously introduced, uh, focused on SMMEs. We've put a graphic up now, which you should be able to see, summarizing some of the tax relief measures. And we've also posted this graphic on our social media platforms. Um, so you should see it. It is an ongoing process. There have been a number of bills and a number of changes to those bills. It is, it is sort of in a dynamic environment at the moment and changing, ever changing. Um, I think one of the, the critical um, aspects is um, the deferred payment of provisional tax and employees tax. Um, and something to remember is again with this definition of what constitutes an SMME from a tax perspective. And in terms of the, the relief measures, the current uh, proposal is that tax compliant small to medium sized businesses with an annual turnover not exceeding 100 million um, will potentially uh, be able to, you know, fall within that category of tax relief measures. So again, possibly broadening that base of SMMEs. And I'm sure a lot of SMMEs are very welcomed um, to the extent that that, that um, turnover amount has been exceeded. I think something to for um, dominant firms to possibly look at um, is the Solidarity Fund, um, which Andres did mention earlier. And critically, a disaster relief fund is something um, that it does fall within one of the public benefit activities and it is specific that the solidarity fund and similar funds could become section 18 or if you meet the certain requirements 18a um, public benefit organizations so donations to them will allow you to get your income tax donation um, and that limit is actually the the normal limit of 10 percent of taxable income has been increased to 20 percent so yes a very beneficial um, tax relief measure that dominant firms could possibly leverage off at the moment 
um, and get your income tax deduction um, in respect of donations. Maybe again, not specifically helping you with, uh, with well, more focused on the empowerment side in terms of your socioeconomic development expenditure. Um, but yes, from a tax perspective, certainly beneficial. I think um, just to to end off, it is evident that the tax provisions are not necessarily again completely aligned with some of the other pieces of legislation, including the BE legislation and the uh, Competition Amendment Act legislation. Um, but that's to a large extent to be expected. Um, I think a lot of um, people comment on the fact that to use the fiscus as a way of developing SMMEs should be done very cautiously um, and that initiatives rather through the DTI and other departments is, is more the way to go. And I think the critical issue from that perspective is that you don't want to narrow or erode the existing tax base. Um, uh, and so there's a, a very fine balance to be struck between um, providing incentives and mechanisms um, that enable growth for SMMEs um, and that will ultimately actually um, enhance or widen the amount of sustainable SMMEs um, and the tax base ultimately.